How's it going everybody? So we have a fun review today as we're talking Terminator Zero. Ever since this project was announced, I've been super excited because this is an idea that combines two things that I love, which are anime and the Terminator franchise. It's kind of surreal to me it took this long to combine the two. Also, very conveniently, this series debuts today, August 29th, which is Judgment Day. While I am somebody that's a big fan of this franchise, I don't think it's controversial to say that more or less the majority of these sequels, the more recent ones in particular, for this franchise have been pretty lackluster, so I appreciate that Terminator Zero is giving something that myself and many fans have wanted from this franchise, and that's a story set within the universe of the Terminator, where we explore the conflicts of Judgment Day and Terminators that doesn't entirely revolve around John and Sarah Connor. It's completely separated. Now, Terminator Zero still has many of the concepts this series is known for in the ever-ongoing battle between the humans and machines, trying to prevent Skynet from dooming humans. Humanity, but I loved all the different nuances and how it repackages and explores the complexities of those struggles through these new characters. While the series jumps around a little bit between different storylines and timelines, throughout these eight episodes, each of them are really interesting. My favorite out of all the storylines definitely was the one revolving around Aiko, Masaki, and the children. A large part of that could be attributed to the fact that their story has the most Terminator-centric action to it. All the various different skirmishes that involve Terminators in this show is really where production Production IG's animation shines the most. I adored their animation back in Ghost in the Shell, and this is top notch too, as it lends itself creatively to these big, intense, high energy battles that, best of all, create this overwhelmingly dark, tense atmosphere. The show in general is pretty dark. It does a fantastic job making Terminators scary again, showcasing the horrors that these Terminators inflict on the resistance in this war from the opening set piece in the future, where a Terminator is brutally hunting and mowing down the resistance. Along with every instance that we see the Terminator once they're sent back to 1997 and wreak havoc on everyone. Pretty much every single time you see the Terminator in this show, you know that inevitably all hell is about to break loose. And almost every single person around that Terminator is going to be killed in brutal fashion. After this show, I guess it doesn't really matter all that much because we're going into Judgment Day. This town would have pretty much no cops anymore. The Terminator pretty much kills an entire police force. But it is very refreshing how this show goes back to the roots of how horrific these Terminators can be, these unstoppable killing machines. Multiple episodes of Terminator Zero, Ico is throwing literally everything she can at this Terminator, and the most that they ever can do is stall it long enough so they're able to get away. Even then, they only get away for a short period of time, and then the Terminator usually ends up finding them. The main crux of the story, however, revolves around Malcolm, not only in that Ico and the Terminator both are sent back for different missions involving him, but in how his arc presents a fascinating angle for the story at hand. Being that he's someone that's haunted by visions of Judgment Day and its impending arrival, so he's trying to prevent it through creating Kokoro, an AI he communicates with in hopes that it'll protect humanity, but like you would expect, it does need some convincing. So there's this fascinating debate throughout the eight episodes between him and the AI about the nature of fate, whether or not humans are worth saving due to humanity's destructive nature, and as much as Malcolm hopes that humans and machines can live together harmoniously, are those hopes in vain? And the cycle of violence will just continue between them in this constant loop of humans and Terminators being sent back in time. Which, you know, is kind of a staple of the Terminator franchise that they're just gonna keep sending people back over and over again in a loop. Admittedly, for as compelling as a lot of their conversations are throughout these eight episodes, there are a few points throughout when they have these conversations where it really does kind of feel like they're just talking in circles and they're kind of just stretching out the runtime. So from here on out, I am gonna be delving into stuff that's a little bit more spoilery. The show is out on Netflix right now that dropped the same time as this review. So if you do want to pause the video, watch the show and come back and then hear the rest of my thoughts, feel free to do so. But I just want to give you guys a warning that I'm going to talk a little bit more spoilers now. Large part of the debates in the show between Malcolm and Kokoro revolve around a very interesting character I wasn't expecting and that is Misaki, who at first seems like this very mysterious character that you don't really understand why she's so significant. Early on, she seems like somebody that's just caught in the middle of the Terminator drama as the babysitter of Malcolm's children. Then it leads to this reveal that kind of shifts the show, and that is the fact that Misaki is a machine. Malcolm created her in the future and brought her back to 1997, so through her character, there's this intriguing level of self-discovery that hammers home the complexities of artificial intelligence and free will. Though we've seen artificial intelligence beaten to death in so many different properties in recent years, I like the angle they approach here that makes it feel more unique. Unfortunately, as these 
these episodes went on, the character I found the least interesting of the main cast was Aiko. Even if she was my least favorite of the main characters, I still enjoyed her overall. There were sprinklings of engaging material here, as she perfectly fills out the resistance fighter archetype in this war. Besides a few awesome fights between her and the Terminator, I feel like she's the least developed of the bunch, but there is a lot of potential for her character to grow with the reveals we get later on that may lead into a season two. I could definitely see some people watching this series and being disappointed by the emphasis around Aiko, Misaki, and Malcolm. Since at various points in the series, the Terminator feels more like a cog in the overarching story or a secondary character. That isn't helped at all by the fact that the Terminator has almost no dialogue until the last two episodes, which is a huge shame because if you're watching the dub, the dub has some insane talent behind it. Timothy Oliphant is the voice of the Terminator. I love Timothy Oliphant, but they almost give him nothing to work with in the dub. And same goes for Rosario Dawson because she voices Kokoro in the dub. It's absolutely tremendous casting, but she's an AI character, so she doesn't ever have to put much emotion into her performance. It almost makes me wonder why you would hire these high-profile actors and then give them barely anything to work with, because this is the Terminator franchise after all. Like always, there are certain story elements at play here that are a tad convoluted or paradoxical in nature, plus the whole idea that Malcolm could somehow create all of this technology in 1997. I mean, later on, it is revealed that he's from the future, but I don't know, I feel like still he would have a rough time creating a fully functional AI and help build these other androids, these Enos, with a multitude of different technology that was available in 1997. You have to remember what technology was like back in 1997. Even if John Connor, Sarah Connor, and Kyle Reese aren't involved in this story, I kind of thought it was fun that the twist, by and large, with these characters felt very reminiscent to them. When it's revealed in the very last episode, in the final showdown between Aiko, Misaki, and the Terminator, and Aiko is actually Malcolm's mom from the future, which kind of recontextualizes all the interactions between Aiko protecting these three kids, not knowing that she, this whole entire time she was protecting her grandchildren. I'm not entirely sure if this is a show that's going to get a season two. You never truly know. I feel like there's enough here with the Enos, Kokoro, and the Terminator 10. There's enough interesting details left hanging in the balance to continue the story with the ongoing conflict with Skynet and inevitably where this potential timeline could lead for the future of the franchise. I guess at the end of the day, the only way we'll find out is if people watch the show and enjoy it. So I'm really curious, would you get a chance to check out Terminator Zero on Netflix? It's on Netflix right now. What'd you think of this show? Did you like the show? Did you not like the show? Show your thoughts down below because I'd love to know your thoughts about this series and where you think we could go with a potential season two. And if you're a big fan of the Terminator franchise, how are you feeling about this brand new entry in the series that is very much not going about it like the usual formula with John, Kyle Reese, Sarah Connor, all that stuff. As always, thank you guys so much for checking out the videos though. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video. Also subscribe to the channel. Subdate views, reactions, unboxings, and more. Next time, I'll see you guys later.